class welcome to your science video lecture so in our previous videos we have completed the chapter number 4 that was sorting materials into groups today we will start a new chapter of your science okay and the name of the chapter is separation of substances in our previous videos in our previous chapter we have learned about that how important it is for us to sort materials into groups and what are the properties according to which we can you know identify and sort those material into a particular type of group today in this video lecture we are going to talk about the methods of separation okay methods of separation of substances and how there are different methods to separate a substance from the other substance and how we can utilize those methods okay so let's begin our chapter so in our daily life there are many instances right there are many instances when we notice substances being separated for example i hope that all of you love tea or if you if not if you don't drink tea you might have seen that how your mother you know take the strainer and with the help of a strainer she she separate the tea leaves from the tea that they are going to drink right so here in this picture also you can see that the that the tea leaves are being separated from the liquid with the help of a strainer okay strainer strainer is the this thing is a strainer okay this jise hindi mein hum channi kehte hain english in english we call it as a strainer strainer helps the helps us to separate the tea leaves from the liquid that that we are going to drink okay and next here also this is a picture where you can see that a butter is taken out by churning milk or curd okay with the help of this method they are separating the butter from the milk and the curd okay and then after doing this whole process at the end we will get butter to eat okay <clears throat> so these are some example where you can, these are some daily life examples where you can notice that how a substance is being separated from a mixture of materials okay so this these are some examples some more examples you can include like let's talk about a simple example suppose you are given a basket okay i have given you a basket containing mangoes and guavas and ask you to to separate them what would you do you will simply you know uh, hold the guava pieces and put the guava pieces on the uh, on a plate okay this is a simple method that with the help of this method you can separate the uh, these two ingredients right but what about a piece of sand imagine i have given you a, a piece of some nails and then you have put those nails in a and those nails uh, you have mixed those nails in a sand and i have asked you to separate those nails and sand what is the method that you are going to use to separate those or if i say that imagine you are given a glass of water and inside that glass of water i have mixed salt so how are you going to separate salt from the water okay so how we are going to separate different substances different quantity of substances that we are going to discuss in this chapter okay first of all let's understand that what are mixtures before we move on that how we can separate different mixtures we should know that what is the meaning of mixture okay so substances which contain more than one component mixed in any ratio is called mixture okay so mixture gen mixture basically means to have to mix two or more component components or compounds together in any ratio for example if we talk about air is a mixture of gases we know that air is a mixture of lot of gases oxygen carbon dioxide nitrogen okay and uh, if we talk about a simple if we take a simple example at our home we eat different type of things right suppose we are going to make a pilau okay so in pilau what are the ingredients that we use to make a mixture pilau is simply a mixture of different food items or you can say different components different ingredients okay so to prepare a pilau what you what are you going to use you are going to use rice 
different type of veggies different type of spices so that is also an example of mixture okay and mixture are of two types homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture so what are homogeneous mixture the mixture in which the particles of substances present cannot be seen are called homogeneous mixture for example solution of sugar and water okay air cold drinks these are some examples of homogeneous mixture so homogeneous mixtures are those mixture mixtures in which the substance that that are being mixed we cannot identify or we cannot distinguish between those just by looking at them or they cannot be seen okay you can say they cannot be seen for example if we uh, take a glass of water and we mix a tablespoon of salt so we cannot see the salt inside the water so that is also a mixture so that type of mixture are examples of homogeneous mixture okay now let's talk about the second type of mixture which is heterogeneous mixture so what are heterogeneous mixtures the mixtures in which particles of the substance present particle of substance present can be seen easily are called heterogeneous mixture for example water in oil dust in air so heterogeneous mixtures are those mixture in which the particles or the substances that are mixed together can easily be distinguished let's take example if we take a glass of water and if we mix mix oil in it we can identify that th what will happen the oil if suppose we have taken a glass of water so this is water here okay and if we mix oil in this glass of water so what will happen the oil will make a upper layer okay the oil will remain at the upper surface of the water so you can distinguish that this part the um, surface the water is at the surface and at the above of the water there is a layer of liquid so you can distinguish these two things clearly okay so those type of mixtures are known as heterogeneous mixtures okay so so these are the type of mixtures and we should know that why we need to separate the different type of mixtures okay so let's see that what are the reasons or why it is needed so now let's talk about that what is the need of separating different mixtures or separating different components okay we carry out the separation of the component of mixture or impure substances with the following purpose okay so the first reason is to remove the unuseful or harmful components so why we why we use the method of separation to separate different objects or you can uh, different components is because we uh, want to you know remove the unuseful substance from the uh, from the component let's say we ha we went to the market and we buy some pulses so with the pulses we know that there are going to be some impurities in the Uh, box of the pearls so what we do we simply use method to separate those unwanted impurities okay second point says to obtain the useful component so as in the above example i have told you that we went to the market to buy pearls so we are removing the impurities to obtain the useful substance okay so the useful substance um in this case is the pearls okay we are going to eat the pearls is the dal that we are going to make we that is a useful component so that help the separation method of separation helps us to obtain the useful component from the impurities or from the mixtures to remove impurities for getting a pure sample so this is a simple method for uh, the water that we drink okay the water that we drink in our houses we remove the impurities from the water and then we drink the water and the simple method to remove the impurities is the different type of methods of separation that we use at our home right so these were the simple these were the reasons why we need to separate the uh, separate the mixtures or you can say components now let's talk about that what is the principle of separation on what basis the separation method or separation of different substances takes place the substances present in a mixture retain their original properties like particular 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 size density melting point boiling point etc 
it means that if we are separating two different sub uh, substances it doesn't mean that the properties of the substances will be changed okay so the properties of the substance that we are uh, you know separating will remain same as it was before there will be no no uh, you know uh, there will be no change in the properties of those substances we use the difference in any one of these properties in the component of a mixture to separate them here let's take an example if i uh, i have mixed uh, uh, some iron nails in a group um let's say sand okay i have mixed some iron nails in a sand and you want to separate the sand from the uh, nails or you want to separate the nails from the sand so which property of the both of the substances that you can use to separate is that you can use a magnet to separate the nails from the sand right so the, you know that iron has a property to attract to get attracted towards the magnet so you will use this property of the uh, iron nail to get, to you know separate those iron nails from the uh, group of sands uh, from the bunch of sand okay so these type of properties of any substance that we can use to uh, to separate those two or different type of mixtures from each other okay so these were the reason why we use different type of methods or you can say different the reasons why we need to separate different components now let's talk about different methods of separation so we are going to study diff these methods in three parts okay basically three parts we are going to study these okay students so we will study these methods in different three sections okay so the first section includes separation of solids from solids so we are going to talk about those mixtures in which the solids are being uh, sol uh, we are going to talk about solid mixtures okay and how we can separate solid mixtures from each other okay and the second section will include that separation of insoluble solids from liquid insoluble means those solids which doesn't get dissolved in liquid okay in this section we will talk about the methods from which we can separate an insoluble solid from a liquid and this third section will include the separation of soluble solids from a liquid soluble solid means those solids which get dissolved in the liquid okay and under these we are going to talk about the different methods so let's see what are the methods and we will discuss this in detail so the first section that includes the separation of solids from solids so in this particular part we will talk about those mixtures of solids the mixtures of you can say different solids so the methods that we can use to dis uh, to separate the solids from solids are hand picking threshing winnowing and sieving so these are the four methods by which we can separate a mixture of solid from solid okay second section includes the separation of insoluble solids from liquid so i have already told you that what is the meaning of insoluble solids those solids which doesn't get dissolved in liquid so what are the methods that we can use to separate these type of uh, mixtures are sedimentation decantation and filtration these are the three methods that through which we can separate these type of mixtures now the third section that includes separation of soluble solids from liquid so soluble solid means those solid which get dissolved in the liquid so the methods that we can use to separate these type of mixtures are evaporation and condensation okay these are the two methods with the help of which we can separate these type of mixtures in this particular video we will just talk about the first section that is separation of solid from solids okay and in the next part of the video we will discuss the other two section and all other the, the other topics from the chapter okay so let's continue and see that what is the first method so first method of separation is hand picking okay okay so let's understand this with an example let's say you ha you went to the market and you bring a packet of food grain purchased from the shop 
okay and then what you did you went inside your kitchen and you opened the packet of grain and you put all those grain in a plate piece of plate like shown in the picture okay and when you put all the grains or you can yes all the grains in the plate you observe that there are different type of things also present in the packet of the grain for example you can say there might be piece of stones like small stones uh, there might be piece of husk husk uh, students husk means impurities okay husk are husk means impurities or maybe broken grains maybe uh, maybe broken grains can be present in the mixture so what will you do to separate those uh, grain and those stones or those husk from the uh, from the packet of grain you can simply just do what you can simply use your hands and by using your hands you can simply uh, uh, pick the piece of stone and put that stone on the other side like in this picture you can see that the, in this plate there are grains and there are this black color is shown um, for the stones so what the lady is simply doing she is simply picking up the stones from the plate and putting the stones aside okay so this is the simple method that people use or uh, in their daily life as in to separate the unwanted things from the grains that we daily use right we eat different type of food so simple this is a simple method where she is simply picking up the stones and putting the stones that she doesn't want in her food so she is putting those stones aside and this is a simple method of separating two solids from solids okay the grain is also a solid and the stone is also a solid so students it is the simplest method of separation of substances and commonly used in our home you might have seen your mother doing this on a regular basis where she removed the stones from the rice that we eat or from the pulses that we eat she, before making those uh, food what she what her mother do they simply uh, you know remove the unwanted things from the piece of grains or the rice okay so it is the very basic and very simple method that people use and you can also use this method at your home this is very basic method that everyone on a on a regular basis use this method at their home okay so the two main point that um, you should you know keep in mind while doing this act, while doing this particular separation method is that so the first point is that this method is used only when the quantities of impurities or the unwanted material in the mixture is small let's say we have taken a you know half gram of pulses okay and we are using this method to separate the stones from the pulses so the impurities the impurities that are present inside the pulses the quantity should be small it should not be like that the pulses that you are going to eat they are in the smaller quantity and the impurities and the material that you are you know separating by using this method has is in a larger quantity okay so the first point is that the impurities that you are separating from the mixture should be in a less quantity or you can say the quantity of those impurities should not be uh, you know large it should be small and the second point says that it is also important to note that the shape color uh, or size of the unwanted material is different from that of the useful material let's say if we are separating stones from the rice so the color of the rice is white okay if we are taking white rice so the stones the color of the stone is it can be gray it can be brown so it is easy to detect that you are you know you are going to separate the red uh, the brown part or the Uh, gray part but if the uh, if the color of the impurity is similar to the uh, similar to the material that we are going to use so it is difficult for you to identify right it will be uh, difficult for you to identify so these are the two important thing that we should keep in mind while we are using this method the method of hand picking hand picking is generally simple method where we use our hands to separate two different solids uh two or more you can say two a mixture of solids by using our hand okay so this was the first method 
so student now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this method so first let's talk about the advantages this method doesn't need any special machinery for the separation of substances yes it is a simple method and there is no need for a special machinery okay we simply can do it at our home or by ourselves okay it take less time when used for a small quantity yes if we are doing it for a smaller quantity so the time that is consumed in this process is very less so now let's talk about the disadvantages it is not feasible for large quantity of substances yes it is not feasible means it is not very you know useful when you are doing this with a larger quantity of uh, substance okay this method cannot be used for a larger quantity second and disadvantage is that it is only possible when substances are visibly different as we talked about in the earlier part also that the difference of the substances should be visible if we are taking the substance which is unwanted so the color of the substance should be visible by ourselves okay the so the useful material should be different from the color of the unuseful material okay so these was hand picking now let's move on and talk about the other method which is threshing so what is threshing students let's see first so here in this picture you can see the women are uh, using the method of threshing to separate the seeds from the plant threshing is a method in which grain seeds are separated from the harvested stalk by beating it on a hard surface okay so here in this picture you can see that the women are using this method of separation what they are doing they have taken the bundle of the harvested seeds Uh, harvested stalks okay and they have made a bundle of it and what they are doing they are hitting the those bundles on the harder surface you can see here a tanker they are hitting it on the surface and what is happening while they are hitting on the surface the grains from the um, stalk uh, the harvested stalk are falling down and they are separating these with the help of this method and the method is threshing okay so threshing is the simple method in which grain seeds are separated from the harvested stalks by beating it on a harder surface okay and this method is basically done in three type uh, this method is done three types in a three uh, you can say three ways there are three ways to do this method okay let's see so the first one is the manual threshing okay manual threshing means what is the word mean manual okay so manual threshing is what when the quantity is small threshing is done manually some bundle of the harvested stalks are threshed on a hard surface this helps in separating the grains so when the threshing is on a smaller level okay when the threshing or you can say when the separation is done in a smaller level so manual threshing is done what it means that men for example here in this picture you can see that how the ladies are doing this they are they have just prepared the bundles of the harvested stalks and they are beating it on a harder surface so this will help the grain seeds to get separated from the harvested stalk okay so this is manual threshing which is done by humans okay then it, there comes the threshing by animals okay when the animal are the one who helps to thresh uh, helps in threshing for for larger quantities threshing is done in the traditional way by using animal for this the stalks are separated on a pole sieved several bullocks are tied on the pole and and are made to walk on over the harvested stalk trembling by hoofs at of the animal helped in separating grains so what happens the harvested stalk they basically put the harvested stalk on the field and they, then the bullocks they are you know they they made the bullocks to uh, walk through the grains and what happens walk through the harvested grain harvested stalks and what happens the grain get separated with the weight of those um, bullocks to the down, in the field and then it can be easily separated okay 
the and third method is threshing by using machines Re recently threshing machines are used for the purpose it can be powered by either a digital uh, di diesel engine or an electrical motor it helps to uh, in saving time and labor so for in today's time what happened threshing is done with the help of machines so here you can see that how they are doing threshing they put the harvested stock on this this part of the machine and while the machine is the harvested stock went inside the machine what happened the husk um, get separated and the seeds they went outside from the funnel i think that is attached on the other side of the machine okay so this is the method where the threshing you by using machines is uh, in recent time they are using it uh, you using this method okay with the help of machine now the next method is winnowing what is winnowing and how it is done so winnowing is an agriculture method developed by ancient culture for separating grain from chaff it is also used to remove weevils or other petals from the stored grains so what happened in the first method of threshing we have separated the grains from the harvested uh, harvested crops right so now it's our job now to that we have to separate the grains from the uh, from those harvested stalks okay so what happens that uh, during winnowing uh, do, uh, during the threshing method what happens the grains gets separated from this harvested stalk but the other impurities get mixed in the grains so to remove those impurities the method of winnowing is used so what is done in the process of winnowing is basically that uh, uh it it is helpful when the wind is there okay sorry when there is wind it is very helpful because with the help of wind what happens as you know that the impurities and the other uh, small small leaves or the petals that are stored in the grains they are very lightweight so while what happen as you can see in this picture that the lady is standing on a stool and while she is standing on the stool this tool which is known as in hindi we call it as supa okay so in this what she did she fill, uh, fill left all the grains and she tilt it and with the help of the wind what happen what is happening that the grain as you know the weight of grain is uh, you know much more than the light weighted impurities so what happen the grain they land on the surface here and while the impurities as they are light weight so with the help of wind what is happening they are you know getting separated on the other side of the field okay so this is the method where the winnowing is used where the where the separation of method is used for grains okay and to remove the impurities or you can say husk from the grains okay winnowing is used to separate heavier and lighter components of mixtures by wind or blowing air okay if there is no wind so what uh, what they do they basically on the fan and with the help of that uh, that what is what happens the lighter weight impurities they get separated from the uh, from the heavier grains okay the heavier grains land on the surface and the lighter impurities they get uh, they get you know distracted from uh, they get uh, flow they flows in the direction of wind okay and they separate with the help of this this method is commonly used by farmers to separate light husk particles from the heavier seed or grains of grains okay the husk particles are carried away by the wind the seeds of grains get separated and from a heap near the platform for winnowing the separate husk is used for many purpose such as food in cattle so what happens the as you know that the method is useful for the for removing the heavier particles and the lighter particles okay and what happens the the heavier grains they land on the surface and the lighter particles they get separated okay so this is the method of winnowing now we are going to talk about the fourth method which is sieving okay so at your home 
So let's take an example for seeding. So sometime at our home, we want to prepare a dish from the art, from atta, right? So what we do, we first of all, we remove the impurities from the uh, flour, right? We remove the impurities. What we do, we put the atta or flour into a, into a tool which is known as sieve and and what happens while we pour the pour the atta in the sieve what happens sieve allows the fine flour particles okay the flour particles means the atta the barik barik atta what happens it get uh, separated from the impurities while it is you know it has impurities so what happens sieve allows the fine pa uh, flour particles to pass through the holes of the sieve and while the bigger impurities remain on the sieve so as you can see in this picture also that the labor is doing what he is separating pedal, uh, pebbles and stones to remove uh, pebbles and stone from the sand that he is going to use for the purpose of preparing uh, whatever purpose he is doing it so what is happening as the sieve this is called a sieve okay so he is doing what he is putting all the sand on this and the uh, the pebbles and the stones are staying up on the upper side of the sieve and with the hole what is happening the pass the sand is passing through the hole and the pure sand is obtained here okay so sieve or sifter is a device used to separate un uh, used to separate wanted element from unwanted materials by passing the mixture through typically used a wooden screw such as mesh or net the basis of separation is the difference between the size of the particle so what is happening as we know that the particles of sands are very small and the particles of stone and pebbles will be a little bit uh, you know more uh, little more than the sand so what is happening to separate these particles they are passing it through the sieve and while the the uh, you know more part the while the particles who are not small they are not allowed to pass through the sieve and the as the sand is very uh, you know the size of sand particles are very small so what is happening the sand is getting collected here and all the pebbles and stone are staying on the sieve okay and the tool that is used for the uh, for separation separating meth uh, separating substances with the help of the method sieving and the tool is known as strainer okay is formed of sieve used to separate solid from liquid okay it is sieve is very simple convenient and time saving process sieving is very simple convenient and time saving process through which the particles of vari variant size can be separated from each other with the help of sieve okay with the help of sieve we separate these particles a sieve is nothing but a simple device with small pores in it which allows the fine materials like floor to pass through leaving behind the impurities it might contain on the top of the sieve. Okay, so what happens with the help of a sieve, um, with the help of a sieve, we sieve we separate these type of impurities which are like with in which the size of the impurities are different okay so what happens the size which are, the size of the the size of the material that we want will you know have is very small so what happens so when we pass the material or the mixture from the uh, sieve so the from the hole the particle the pure particle get into the plate or you can say wherever we want it and the other impurities it remain on the sea okay so these were the students method of separating a mixture of solid from solid okay in the next video we will talk about the separation of uh, insoluble solids from liquid and soluble solids from liquid so to, for today's video these are the methods that we discussed what were the method first one is hand picking after hand picking we discussed threshing and after threshing winnowing and the fourth method seed and i hope you all understood these four methods okay and in the next video we will discuss the remaining method of separating substances thank you students